want to pray. Make sure we pray for Andy, amen, and for his family, amen, um, for his sons, amen. So you know what? This this evening, um, you can trust in God. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through in life. It doesn't matter what situation you're in. You know what? God has a way of bringing things together. He has a way of bringing, amen, uh, of repairing families. He has a, a way of repairing hearts and, and, and bringing, amen, things in unity. So I want to pray that, you know, that you just can just continue, continue moving forward in things of God. Trust in God this evening. Amen. Allow God, amen, to take control of the things that are out of control this, this evening. Amen. So let's let's bow our hearts, let's cry to God as we worship, as we open up the prayer minute. So let's worship God. Thank you, O Lord. And my Father, we thank you, God, this evening, God, for this time and opportunity, God, to come into your house. God, I pray, God, for the needs brought before your precious throne of grace. God, I pray, God, for this family, God, that you have your hand upon them this day, God. God, upon these children, God, and I pray, God, that you continue, God, to move mightily, God. But, God, we pray, God, for salvation, God. God, that you will always be glorified. God, we pray we bless your word this evening. We will pray you open up our hearts, open up our minds, God. And, God, and reveal yourself unto us, God. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You take time to read some more this evening. You guys out in here seeing you with the fan, but you're oh. you're with child, so you can always have a fan. <laughs> you guys out? Just fine. Just fine. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm always high. I got a little fan on for me over here, so. <coughs> so we got some quick announcements. I just want to remind you about regular services every Sunday morning at ten, every uh, Wednesday at seven. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, you can catch up with all of our services on YouTube. Amen. If you're ever going through something, you're alone, you need something, um, just kind of get your mind off things. It'd be a good opportunity to go to YouTube and listen to one of the services. If you're having trouble sleeping, amen, and you want to hear my voice, maybe it'll soothe you to sleep, <laughs> put it on YouTube before you go to bed. Okay. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Don't forget, Sunday night fights. Amen. We are doing this every first and third Sunday of the month. Amen. Uh, I already... Um, I got us a preacher for this Sunday. So this Sunday is our Sunday night fight night. Amen. So um, be here Sunday. This Sunday night, we're having service here this Sunday night at 6 o'clock. You, you are welcome to come. We encourage you to invite someone. You don't want to miss it. Remember, these Sunday nights, what we're doing is we're going to do different things. Uh, the next one, we may um, do a prayer night. Um, I'm going to say about getting drama teams in here and, and, and music musicians in here. And we're going to get guest preachers throughout. I'm working on the next guest preacher after this one. So we will have a guest preacher this Sunday night. Already already confirmed. You'll be here. So you don't want to miss out. Amen. You don't want to miss out. The service that was going to change your life is a service that you missed. Amen. So you don't want to miss this one. Amen. This Sunday night at, five, at 6 o'clock. Uh, don't forget we have the Inland Empire invasion. The four, uh, they dubbed us the four horsemen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, myself, Pastor Robert in Riverside, Pastor Peter in Rialto, Pastor Rudy in San Bernardino. We're the four horsemen, apparently. Um, I call us the four headless horsemen because I think we're running around like chickens without heads sometimes. But we have these street invasions coming up May 4th in San Bernardino, June 8th in Rialto, July 20th here in Harupa Valley, 
and August 17th in Riverside. We're going to be doing Jesus marches, outreaches, uh, music. We're going to do all kinds of crazy things. Um, and then we have our corporate services on May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Amen. We're going to, May, we're going to celebrate. Amen. With the word of God on May 5th at 6 o'clock at the Riverside Church. We're rotating uh, hosting. We hosted the last one for Good Friday. So Cinco de Mayo is going to be Riverside you don't want to miss this, amen. These are important services. These are important events to be a part of. And you don't you want you want to make sure you're a part of it, amen. So these are all the announcements. We're gonna let up an offering. So let's worship God, amen, as Russia comes forward. Amen. You know what this uh this evening you give with an open heart, amen. Um those of you who who are faithful and, and putting for the for the for the pledge for the carpet. Uh, we're going to make the appointment for him to come next week and uh, and get the carpet in here. And we should be done with the sanctuary. And the next will just be the flags and then whatever decorating you guys want to do. Then I got to paint the, the Sunday school. Thinking about making one wall a giant chalkboard. Amen. But we're going to have a good, we're going to make a good room for the kids. Um, but you give faithfully, faithfully. Allow God to, to, to use your life. Amen. Your finances. Um, God has always been faithful when it comes to giving. He's never let me down. Amen. Allow him, amen, to be a part of all parts of who you are this evening. Amen. Remember, bring your tithes, give an offering, to support missions. I'll be sending our missions. It seems like it happens really fast now. I'll be sending our missions this weekend, amen, to Peru and to uh, Colombia, uh, to the churches down there. And they're doing good. They're having a blessed time. Maybe I'll put together a couple photos, a little photo video for you guys to see what's going on, where, where your finances are being, where we're being invested at in, in, in Colombia and in Peru. Amen. So you give with an open heart. Amen. Let's bow our hearts as uh, Brother Angel bless the gift from the government. Father God, we ask that you bless these tithes and offerings brought before you this evening, God. We ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we God we serve. This evening, I want to talk about something I think is important. We've been able to, we've had some pretty good topics here lately. If you missed out on, on uh, Sunday, man, you missed the Holy Ghost time, man. Yes. God really met with us on Sunday morning. Um, God really spoke to hearts. And uh, you can go back on YouTube and, and, and see it. Amen. You can see what God has done. And how God was touching hearts. But it's not like being there, man. It's not like being there. It's not like being there. You know, people were crying at the altar and and, and and genuinely being touched by God. And and today I wanna I wanna do a, a quick study and we're gonna I'm gonna put the scriptures on the screen so you guys can read them. And I'm gonna ask you guys to take turns reading them. Because I want you guys to to be a part of what we're gonna talk about. See what I want to talk about is, is not giving up because it's, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. We want to give up. We want to give up on something, but the, but the biggest mistake we can ever do is giving up on what God's doing in our life. You see, God, God is doing something big and powerful in you. Each of you are important in the works of the kingdom of God and moving the gospel forward. You know that, that who you are is no different than who's, who Peter was. When he was out fishing, there's no different than James when, when Jesus is walking by and he's calling him. It, it is no different. This is that you guys, you guys are just as important to the to to furthering the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're watching a video before service talking about it's uh, Paul Harvey, and he had a radio show back in the 50s and the 60s, and he was it's a it's a thing called If I Were the Devil, and what he says he says all these things. If he was the devil, these are the things he would do. 
But the interesting thing is, this was back in 1965 when it was recorded, and they're the things that are transpiring today. Okay, so there's a lot of things that that come at us, things that hit us. A lot of people will will talk to us, and sometimes they discourage. Have you ever been discouraged? It, it's hard for somebody to get in my head. It really is. My my head's big and it's solid. Amen. And it's hard to get in there. But sometimes people can get in my head where it's like it bugs me. Especially now in my Christian walk because I've always fought with this. I know I know what I look like. I know. People always say I look mad. He's mad, he's mean, he's so serious. Right? That I always say that. But if you knew me, I'm always laughing and joking about something. Sing with me for five minutes, I'll make fun of you and make, make everybody laugh. Ask Alex, I'll tell you, I do it to him all the time. Wow. I, I, it's, it's who I am. I got a character. I just, it's part of my. You get with me and my brothers, forget it, man. We sit there and we make fun of everything. Ooh, forget it. But I have this look. I have this look. I'm serious. So I really, and, and, and don't get me wrong, there was a time in my life where I was very serious. I didn't play games. But since I've given my life to God, I've worked really hard to not be the person I used to be. So sometimes if somebody comes and tells me something that goes against what I've worked so hard to not be, it sticks to me. It, it, it really affects me. It gets into my head. And sometimes it even makes you wonder, man, you mean all this work I've been doing, what was it for? Nothing? It's not even paying off? They can't even see it? What's the point? So it's easy to get discouraged. Your heart, you know where your heart's at. You know your heart wants to, to serve God and you love God. But then your mind tells you these, these, these other things that, well, maybe I don't want to do this no more. And it can happen with anything in life. But you know, we gotta, we got to stay strong. You can't give up. You are important into what God needs to do. Do you know the disciples, when, they, when Jesus called the 12 disciples, they were just ordinary, or, ordinary men. They weren't nobody special. They didn't have special gifts. They were, they were, their special gift was the ability to surrender their heart to God. That was their only gift they had. They had, they had nothing special that God that, that you saw Jesus says, hey, because you do that, let's do this. Matter of fact, what happened when 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 they're out there fishing all day and then Jesus says, Hey, cast your nets back into the ocean. They said, Well, I've been doing it all day. You want me to throw it back in there again? Okay, God, at your word, I'll do it, you know. He didn't really want to do it, but he did. So in the Bible, you don't read that they use their special talents of fishing to feed people. They use their special talents of fishing to manifest, the, the, to bring a manifestation of God. That the fish were, that, that there was nothing being caught. That at the word of the Lord, the nets were starting to break and they had to get people to help them pull up the nets, right? So this was, this was what God did. God didn't use what they did. When, when the 5,000 people were following them, and everybody was starving. Did, did, did Jesus say, hey, you, you know what? You guys are fishermen, huh? Hey, go get some fish so we can feed these people. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't use their abilities that they already knew. He, he, he manifested himself through their life. They still fed the people. It was still their hands that did the work. But it was the manifestation of God that filled the people. You see, you're important. You can't give up. God's going to manifest himself through your life and use your hands through his abilities. And he's going to do something special. But in Christianity, we, we, we come to a point where, where, where we give up, where we stop, or we hit the pause button. The pause button is killing us. The pause button's killing us. It really, it, it's killing us. The pause button is what we do when we say, you know what, I, I, I can't do this right now. Let me hit pause. I'm gonna go and go about my business. Then, you know what, that's still my church. It's still my pastor, but I'll, I'll be back there later. And then we can show back up later. Let me hit play again. Okay, now I can go about my business. And this is the stuff that kills us. This is the stuff that holds us back, right? We don't do that. We're, I was watching TV and there's a commercial for the Paris Olympics that's coming up. The news is talking about the Paris Olympics. We were in Paris a, a year and a half ago, two years ago. And they're talking about how they're gonna do outdoor events. 
And they don't know if they're going to bring them indoor because of terrorists and all this other stuff. But the Olympics is an event that's going to be going on. And these people who are going into the Olympics are people who've been competing, who've been, who've been dedicated their lives to this thing, right? So I want to read first, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. This is the New King James Version, okay? Who wants to read it on the screen? Go ahead, Cynthia. It's all you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here it goes. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, as I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I, dis but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Okay, now read that part again, verse 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Unless when I when I preach my, to others, I myself will not might not become disqualified. And I found this interesting, right? So when you read it, <coughs> here it is in the NIV version. It says, "Do do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. In other words, don't walk. You run. There's a prize." Verse 25, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Okay? The crown we're receiving is going to last us forever. Verse 26, he says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. Right? He's not out of order. He's following he, 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 he's put, they're playing part of the leader. He says, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. What good is a boxer if all he's doing is in the air, right? Verse 27. No. I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Right here, Paul writes, and he says, he says, we're running a race, right? What's the finish line? Anybody know what the finish line is? Eternity, Eternity heaven, right? That's, that's, that's the finish line. You imagine, you know, at the, at the you're running, and then here's, here's the podium, and, and, and so there's looking, you know, there's a name on the back of the book of life, you're running now. Here's my name in the book of life, yeah, it is, okay, good, thanks, and you just keep running right past the podium, right? Because you're making, you're making, you're running, you're finishing the race. <coughs> because you're gaining a prize, right? We're running the race. We're running to what's the prize? It's it's eternity, right? In this world, we compete for a lot of things. We compete things at work. You compete for position, for more money, right? There's a lot of things we compete for at work. At school, academia, so you you compete to get better grades, so you can get into college, and and so forth. In marriages. We compete for the love of our children, grandchildren. There's always a competition going on somewhere, right? But all these things fade away. All these things fade away. The thing that doesn't fade away is God. It's the kingdom of heaven. That's why Paul says here, he says, he says, no. He goes, I strike a blow to my body. Because I hit myself. What does that mean? I discipline myself. I myself know that I do not want to fight, is what he's saying. I myself know I do not want to run. I know this. But I am disciplining myself. I'm hitting myself. Because I got to finish this race. I can't stop. I got to keep moving. I got to move forward. This is what Paul's saying. He goes, I know I, I know I don't want to run. I know I don't want to compete. I know that these people are bugging the heck out of me. I know they don't listen to me. I know. But I'm not going to stop. I know that I want to do this instead of that. I know. 
But because I got to bring my own body into submission, I got to become a slave, he says. He, goes, I, I, he says, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Why does, why, why does, I, I, I put this, this particular translation in for a reason. It's kind of interesting they use the word slave, right? Why would he says I I beat my body, right? And make it my slave. Right? Your slave. Why why do you think? Somebody give me that. Why do you think they say slave? <coughs> Is a slave allowed to do whatever it feels like? Can a slave go anywhere he wants to go? Is a slave free to go out and act willingly and do whatever he wants and speak whenever he wants to speak? No, right? Is a slave allowed to touch anything he wants to touch? No. Grab anything he wants to grab? Take anything he wants to take? Uh -huh. the, the slave is in submission to the master, right? right? The slave has to take orders to his master. The slave is not allowed to get out of line or there's a punishment, right? Paul says... I make my body my slave that it is not allowed to do anything that I do not allow it to do. Think about that. Paul says, don't let your body do anything that you know you're not, you don't want it to do. So, so you got to submit yourself unto God and say, God, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I, I got to submit myself unto God. Because the moment, the moment we fall short, the moment we stop running this race, the moment we allow we allow our, our body to take control is the moment we get disqualified. That's why he says, he says that I may not be disqualified that when I go and speak to someone else, so he says, he says right here, he says, he says, so that after I have preached to others, I myself may not be disqualified for the price. After that, I have preached to others. Have we ever told somebody about Jesus? Have you ever told somebody about God? Just in passing, a friend, a co-worker, somebody at school, somebody you know, a stranger, right? Man, God loves you, man. Man, you can start a brand new life with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about it. Let me tell you about this guy I met. Over 2,000 years ago, somebody beat him, beat him to death. And he hung on that cross for me. He shed his blood so I can have a brand new life. We let them know about the love of God, right? God is real. We know God is real. If you didn't think God was real, you wouldn't be here. God is real. And we share that. But Paul says, I make my body a slave so that when I do share that, I'm not disqualified. Right? Because the moment, the moment we fall into temptation, the moment we, we submit ourselves to the things that we know we shouldn't do, what, what happens? Everything that we just shared. Everything is for nothing. Everything is for nothing. How, how would you feel if you, if, and I've said this before, if, if you guys are driving down the street and you see me walking out of a strip bar, <coughs> man, that'd be crushing, right? I'm supposed to be the pastor, the spiritual leader of the church. And it's like, man, everything he told me was a lie. That's what Paul says. People, people are, aren't listening to your words. They're hearing what you're saying, but they're looking at what you're doing. Right? Does that make sense? People are hearing what you're saying, but they don't care until they see that you're living what you're saying, right? That I myself may not become disqualified. Any questions, any input? Anybody have a question? Go ahead, Kyra, what do you got to say? <laughs> That's true, because <coughs> when you give your life to God, all what people that you knew would not look at you, but once you give you, yourself to God, those people that knew you are now watching you to see what, because they want to make sure that what you're saying to them is true. And if you're not walking and talking, then they're, then what do they got to give themselves to? If you're not doing it yourself, why are they going to believe you? If you're just saying and you're not doing, you got to do and say, and all that you have to walk with it with God for somebody else to be saved. Our family members are in the world. We want saved. Well, it's 
praying for them as well, but also showing them that we're walking in God's way and that we're doing God's will. Because that's the only way they're going to see it and believe that God's will. Because if they don't believe it, they ain't going to do it. Let's make it an easy example. You sit there and say, I'm a Raider fan. I'm a Raider fan. I'm a Raider. <laughs> Live, die. Raiders, right? Well, you're wearing a Kansas City jersey. Oh, come on. Come on <laughs> right? Oh, but I'm a Raider fan. There's a guy at work. I see him in the LA office. And, and, they, and, and he switches teams like the waves in the ocean, man. He, he, he's a Rams fan. He's a, he's a Raider fan. He's a Chargers fan. He's a Broncos fan. He has, he has a shirt for every team. He just, and when you talk to him, he'll tell you he's a Raider fan. You know, that's what he'll, that's his, that's his, it's his, that's his default. Okay, that's his default. But he'll wear it. It's, 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 it's insane. Because you know, I'm a Raider fan. Okay, and you'll never catch me wearing any other team, any other jersey for any other football team. It's just not the way it's gonna work. You know, especially like if you're a Rams fan. You don't know, ever want to wear a Rams jersey. Ever. Brother. Ever. Brother. Ever. <laughs> even, even, even God had, had the Rams sacrifice. On, on the, <laughs> just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. So, so here's the thing. But you, you follow what I'm saying? It, it, okay. You say, you say, here, follow me to this team, follow me to this team, follow me to this team, but you're wearing a different jersey. Follow me for my God, follow me for my God, follow me for my God, but I'm going to live this way. Right? <laughs> We become disqualified, right? And I use the football analogy, the jersey and all that, because it's an easy way to visualize the whole thing, right? That's an easy way to visualize it. I'll never wear an angel's jersey, an angel's hat. No. Nope. I'll never do it. Never. 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 Right? It, it, because I'm not an angel fan. Now, if you're an angel fan and you wear them, well, that's, that's, that's up to you. You can do that. That's okay. Right? I'm not going to get you to change it, just, just like you're not going to get me to change it, right? But we stay strong to what we believe. This is my team. And a lot of times we're more faithful to our teams than we are to our God. That's come on. Well, I'll, I'll never switch my team, but I'll switch my God. Okay. Why well, didn't switch my God? No, but we switch our churches. Come on. We switch our leaders. We switch, we switch the way we live for God. And we can't do that. That's not the way, that's not the way the word of God was written. That's not the way God intended it. You see. That's why Paul says that I keep myself in, in under submission that I may not be disqualified. That I'll beat myself into submission. Okay? We can't, we can't give up. First Chronicles 15, 7. First Chronicles 15, 7. Second Chronicles 15, 7. Second Chronicles 15, 7. It's a, I mean, you don't have to change it if you want to read it. That you will be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Simple. But you, be strong. Don't let your hands get weak. Right? Don't let your hands be weak. Because your work, this shall be rewarded. Be strong. It's easy. It's easy to say, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to tell you guys I'm tired. I'm tired. I, I, the joke amongst some of us pastors is that people don't understand how Martha and I have so much energy. We're always going and moving and doing and doing and doing. Uh, Sister Amanda out in San Bernardino, Pastor Rudy's wife. She says that she thinks that we found a found a youth and we're hiding it because we, we don't stop. We don't stop. I have yet to meet any young person who's going to keep up with us. In our church, we need young couples that are going to serve God and be able to come and help pull the, the church with us. But the problem is young people can't keep up with us because the scripture's like this. We let our hands get weak. We get tired. And, and yes, it is tiring. Serving God is tiring. It is tiring. And it is so much fun. But it is tiring. The point is simple. As you come to church, as you're serving God, we're going to be tired. Who in the right mind will go to church on a Wednesday evening when they got to work the next day? Right? We do. We do. 
But why? Why do we do it? Why, why do we do it week after week, year after year? Why do we do it? And you know when you know what happens? I want you to think about this. You come, you come every Sunday, you come every Wednesday, week, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. People see that and they're looking, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm thinking that's not, you know what? They're, maybe they're right. Maybe they're, man, they're doing it, right? And then we push pause. And all that time we put in, we allowed our hands to get weak. And they washed away because the only thing they saw was we stopped. The only thing they saw was we stopped. See, what you do is so important to other lives, to other souls. It's so important for other people. People out there are, are, are crying. There's people crying right now in their own rooms, not knowing what tomorrow's going to hold for them. There's people right now contemplating suicide, wondering why, why they even why did God even allow them to take their first breath. Um, I was going to talk about that thing that Pastor Lorenzo put up in the rally of the United States. It was the Chinese for the Olympics. You know, they they were practicing and they won a lot of races and they were good. But the only thing they're going to be remembered for. <coughs> The race when they got confused when they were running back and forth. Forget all the other medals or everything else, what they won, but they were remembered for the mess up. Then that's the way it is with us. They're just waiting for us to mess up so they can point that finger at me and say, "Boom!" Forget everything else. They're just gonna remember that. You see, <clears throat> people are making decisions today what they're going to do with the rest of their life. Some of it is to determine whether or not they're going to even want to be alive tomorrow. Some people are deciding whether or not they want to keep the baby that, that they just found out they're pregnant with. Some people are deciding whether or not they, they want to leave their spouse for someone else. Some people are deciding whether or not they want to run away from home at age 13. There's people are deciding all kinds of different things. But the Bible says that we are a light set on a hill that cannot be hidden, right? Mm -hmm. To let your light so shine that everyone can see it. You know that that's who you are? It doesn't mean that you're gonna go stand on a hill and okay, I'm gonna put myself on, I'm not ready to be on that hill yet. Uh uh. God called you, automatically installed that light upon you, turned it on. You are that hill. You're, you're that hill, instantly. You're the hill. And God says, you know what? I made you the hill because you're important. You're extremely important to me. You're important to the works that I have, the plan that I have for you. And a lot of times we can convince ourselves differently. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Who wants that one? Are you going to me to put scriptures on the screen. I'm making it easy for you guys this time. It's so much up, but I messed up. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For if whoever a man sows, that he should will also reap. <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> For he who sows to his flesh will of his flesh reap con corruption. corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of all the spirit reap. Will of, of the, the spirit Great. Everlasting life, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So it says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, right? Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. Think about that. Don't be deceived, don't get confused, don't get it twisted, don't turn things around. God is not mocked. In other words, God's not a lie. What he, what he is is truth, okay? Do not get it twisted. God is truth. For whatever a man soweth, that is what he reaps. What is sowing and reaping? What is a simple sowing? What is sowing, sowing and reaping? Planting seeds. Planting seeds, right? Those so seeds, seeds. You put seeds in your grass. We just had somebody come and fertilize our yard and put seeds and topper all over it. 
and we're wetting it and now you get little grasses that are coming out, right? Mm -hmm. We sowed seed, grass seed, and now we're reaping grass seed, right? We sowed it, we reaped it. I didn't put, we didn't put grass seed and got apple trees. No, that, that, that's not the way it works. We put <laughs> grass seed and got grass. Makes sense, right? So he says, don't be deceived. Don't get it twisted. Don't get confused. Don't think differently. God is not a joke. Whatever whatever you put in, that's what you're going to get out. Right? Does that make sense? He says, says, when we sow to the flesh, our bodies, what we want, what did, what did Paul say a little while ago? He says, I beat my body into submission and make it my slave. So it says, we sow to, to the flesh, our bodies, we sow to whatever our body wants, because our body wants a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Our body wants a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So we sow to the flesh, what happens? We follow what our body wants, not always what God wants. That's why Paul says that I put my body under submission and make it my slave. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But if we sow to the spirit, what is, now what is sowing to the spirit? Remember, you put you put grass seed, you get grass. You sow to the flesh, you, that means if you go and do what your flesh wants, you go and sin, you're going to get sin. Right? What's sowing to the spirit? How do we sow to the spirit? Go ahead, go ahead, Cynthia. How do you sow to the spirit? <laughs> well, I was like, like reading your Bible, praying, going to church, worshiping. Those are, those are, those are, that's all accurate, right? What else? Go ahead, Kyra, what else? What else? How else can we sow to the spirit? Uh, Fellowshipping with other people. Fellowshipping with other Christians. Right? Fellowshipping with non-believers and getting them to be, getting, sharing the word of God. Right? Sharing the word of God to, to, to strangers. You're sowing the spirit. You're, you're planting the seed of the spirit everywhere. Right? You plant the seed of the spirit, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get fruits of the spirit. Man, I feel so alone. I feel like, why am I even here? Man, I hate nighttime. When the lights go off, I'm alone in my bed, and all I do is cry. So do the Spirit. Get some joy back in your life. Begin to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Then let somebody know, say, you know what? God loves you, man. God loves you. Begin to let somebody know. So do the Spirit. Reap of the Spirit. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions or input? Okay, Hebrews 11, 6. It's important that we sow to the Spirit so we can reap to the Spirit, right? So Hebrews 11, 6. I got it. For without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently Right? Without faith, it is impossible mm -hmm. to please God. Yes. Without, without faith. So don't you think if we sow to the Spirit, we reap of the Spirit, we build our faith, and we can help please God? Mm -hmm. Now, why do you say without faith, it's impossible to please God? Make an example. So, you have a couple. Call them husband, wife, friend, brother. One is always saying that they're going to take the other one somewhere and never takes them anywhere, right? That's what they say. Well, the other one keeps hearing that this one is saying, hey, we're going to go to Disneyland. We're going to go to Disneyland. I want to go to Disneyland. You want to, I'm going to take you to Disneyland. I'm going to go to Disneyland. Well, seven, eight, nine, ten years pass by. They're still waiting to go to Disneyland. Meanwhile, their friend is saying, hey, how was Disneyland? <laughs> Oh, you know, we're going to go. Are you sure you're going to go? Yeah, we're going to go. Okay, another five, ten years pass by. How was Disneyland? Man, he ain't never going to take me to Disneyland. I ain't never going to get to Disneyland. I lost faith in him. He ain't going to take me to Disneyland, right? Now, how does that work with God? God's going to do it. I ain't worried about it. God's going to take care of it. God's faithful. God is always just. He always rewards me. God never, the Bible says God never leaves me and forsakes me, so I'm going to stand on that word. 
and I know he's going to come through. God will take care of it. And if I don't get it, it's because he knew I didn't need it. Because he knew it was going to make me stumble. So that's why he removed it from me. Because I have faith that God has my best interest. I know that I serve God. Because I'm going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. I know that if I serve God, God will save the people who I love. Because his word tells me he will. That's faith, right? Yeah. But what if we're just saying, yeah, God said he'll do it, but, you know, I'm still broke. Yeah. I ain't doing it. Yeah, they're sick or whatever. We can't please God. Because when there's no faith, there's only doubt. Mm -hmm. Right? You either have faith or you have doubt. You can't have both. Yeah. Right? That's why it says without, without, it, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's what we gotta we gotta see, guys. We gotta we gotta if you wanna make it, we have to see God. If you wanna make it, you gotta stand on the things of God. You gotta stand on the word of God. One of the things says, so into the spirit, Cynthia said. Or in a church, reading your word, right? Worshiping God. Mm -hmm. If you read your word, you begin to build your faith. Yeah. Reading your word builds your faith. Yeah. Once you begin to, to read your word and understand what you're reading and get into it and understand the word of God. You'll begin to understand, hey, you know what? This is real, man. This is real. The Bible is the only book that I've ever read that's alive. It's alive. <laughs> it is thinking alive. Mm. I read things and I'm like, whoa, what the heck? And I'll read it again and it'll be a whole different it'll be a whole different story. And I'm like, whoa, I just read that. Mm -hmm. Blowing my mind. Right? It's alive. It's alive. Any questions in anybody? Go ahead, Carol. Okay, Jeremiah 29, 11, 13. <laughs> Go ahead, Karina. That's all you. Oh, oh, oh. For, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and grow and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I like this scripture. I really love this scripture. I like preaching this scripture in other churches. Over there, I start yelling and everything. Over here, I'm just kind of, you know, oh, I don't yell like I do over there. But it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil. Isn't that powerful? Think about that for a moment. You gotta understand, do you believe the word of God? is truth that it is the book that has been inspired by God himself you gotta you gotta ask yourself if you believe this if you believe this to be true and you believe that that, that God is real then then read that for I know the thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will okay. seek me and find me. He ain't playing hide and seek with you because he's saying you're going to find him. And when you search for me with all your heart. You got to understand, you gotta, I read it this way all the time because you got to understand this is real. This is, the, this is the true living word of God. This right here is a prophecy this is God speaking. These are the words of the Lord before Jesus Christ speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. Okay, This is God speaking like when God spoke to Moses. When God tells Moses, hey, I need you to go to Egypt and tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. That's what God did. When Moses would go to the tabernacle, go behind the curtain, and he would stand in the very presence of God's manifestation. That's what this is. God himself, the words of God from his voice, his mouth, speaking to Jeremiah. And he's, and, he, and he's saying that to give you this message. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. God's not trying to hurt us. He's not trying to separate families. He's not trying to bring division. He's not trying to make you feel alone. He's not trying to make you feel like there's no reason for you to be here anymore. He says peace, not evil. Amen? Any any questions? Any questions? Any questions? 
Any questions? Go ahead, Carol. All right. Last, <laughs> last one. <coughs> Do dogs, go to heaven? do dogs go to heaven? According to Disney, all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> now, the, the debate of dog of animals making it to heaven, I'm going to tell you, the Bible doesn't spe doesn't speak to specify that. Okay. But being a dog owner, okay, we have dogs. And, and my wife will tell you that I, that I don't like our dogs. But I love our dogs. They're, they're amazing. And I tell you what, I I kind of hope they do. At least not the ones I bite. <laughs> because some of these pets, man, they are stinking. They're like humans, man. I remember we had a dog, Jimmy. And and when my mother-in-law moved into the house, her and, her and my father-in-law, they were like, what the heck? I remember my mother and I started saying, man, that thing just does about everything but talk. Because he he, he let you know everything. He, 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 would, he would go up to you, he would do his head, he would tell you. He, he, he spoke, he, like, he spoke, right? So I'm not going to tell you the scripture says they go to heaven, but I will tell you, you know, it's a good hope, you know. I, mean, I hope they do. Say your entire household shall be saved. Your household shall be saved, right? Yeah. Our animals, right? Our animals, our animals. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, we'll the church some people, like, like when you get older, <laughs> oh, you know, the older people, they think that they, all they got is little animals. You know, my dad and his girlfriend just recently lost, they had to put their dogs out. And they had eight little dogs. They had eight little dogs. Eight little dogs. They had 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 eight you know, now they got one more dog left, and it's like he's getting sick and stuff, and they're kind of like not being sad because they don't have nothing else. You know, they they took their dogs every day out from walk, so, you know, that was their exercise, walking their dog. Now they're down to one, and he's not that well, so. You know what I do think? You know what I do think is this. There's good pet owners and bad pet owners. We have bullies. And our bullies, they look like they're going to eat you. But they are stinking nice. They are really nice dogs. Really friendly, really good dogs. They, they, they could be inside dogs who wanted to. But then I remember growing up and having friends who had, who had dogs that looked just like my dog. And they were killers. I mean, they were killers. They, they, they trained them that way. Now, my thought is simple. Those who abuse God's creation... Will be judged for abusing God's creation. It's that simple. That's like lately, um, I don't know if you guys heard, but lately there's been a lot of people being cited, like being on cameras, you know, everywhere, cameras, um, abusing animals. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, it was so sad. The other day I seen on the news this person, Chiquita. yeah, a little chihuahua, uh, black chihuahua, and and it was, and then it got, it was on a bike, and he was running it over. Over the, the poor little Killed dog it. and Killed the miniature chihuahua. It was like, oh, I was crying. I mean, I couldn't believe. I believe it. I don't know, but you know. I believe it, man. <laughs> but it's it's like last week a guy had a little puppy, threw it down, beat it, and then <laughs> the dog when the dog was done beating it, and took off. The dog was like following it. The man. And they said he had to have been that owner because why would that dog run after the, the man that beat it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, they, because it was, came with him. Because the dog was beaten into submission and still ran back to its owner. Yeah, and that is so sad. I was like, I mean, that's happening. And I start to think, you know, uh, I hope to, you know, that God has mercy on these people because those are God's creations. Mm -hmm. You know, just like we are, his children, Nobody has that. Just stop being abusive. <laughs> but, you know, that's it. So it's like, he's <coughs> like his animals. He created everything on this world. So that's awful. I feel sorry for those people. Maybe the law can't do it, but you know what? God will judge them. 
Actually, no, because I think that one's got more rights than humans. Like. Um, okay. So we're going to get tired. Okay. Serving God, serving God can get tired. Right? I'm not going to lie. It's going to get tired. But I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I have seen things. I've been places. Uh, you know, I remember when Martha and I, we, we pastored our first church up in Central California. There was a, a girl that I worked with, her and her husband. Um, they were going through some issues, and we took them out for dinner one time. And uh, and when we were done, at the end of the night, they were amazed at how much we laughed, how much of a good time we had, and not a single curse word was said, and nobody drank and I go, well, yeah, we don't drink. Right? Just because we're Christians doesn't mean we're dead. I still like to have fun, right? You know, we don't do any of those things. You know, if you don't, if, if, that, if you have to do that kind of stuff, they call that fun, then maybe it ain't fun. But, you know, they're, they're like amazed, right? So it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But the point of today is don't get tired. Don't give up. Okay, last scripture, Matthew 11, 28 and 30, through 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and low, lowly. lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This says, come to me. If, if you're tired, it says, come to me. If you're burdened, come to me. Because let me give you the rest. Just let me give you the rest. You know, and uh, this is, I seen this thing on the news. Then I seen it again on the TV show right after. People are professional cuddlers. <laughs> professional cuddler, professional cuddlers. They cuddle to the stars, I guess. You know, just, just give them a hug. All right, just give them a hug. I bet you Alex can do that. <laughs> I'm a big old bear. So how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> but they show that people will, will go and get, <laughs> get cuddled, right? And once they get into the arms and, and they feel the embrace, they just break out crying. Mm -hmm. They just break out crying, right? I remember I got in a car accident like a block away from here, back then. Yeah, it was, she was pregnant with Jacob. It was a ninety. It was a ninety. It was actually ninety six, late ninety five, early ninety six. I know it was born ninety six, July. So it was late ninety five, early ninety six. And I've always been a strong guy. I've always been, you know, whatever. And I got an accident right here. It was at lunchtime. We were. I worked up on the hill. And we were going to lunch. We had a half hour to go down to the MGM Burger and get a burger and go right back into it. So there. By the way, you don't go there. It's um, oh so on the way on our way down there, we didn't even make it to get we didn't even make it to get a burger. Uh, a pickup truck out of it used to be um, yeah, Yeager. Yeah, Yeager used to be right there. Then it turned Riverside Construction. I don't know what it is right now. Um, they were right there, and a flatbed pickup construction truck pulled out in front of us, and we slammed into the side of the back of the pickup to the flatbed. We were in it in an '84 two-door Toyota Tercel hatchback. Wow. Okay, I was a lot smaller back then, so. <laughs> sitting, sitting in the passenger, I'm in the passenger seat, right? And my friend's next to me. And that the flatbed of that truck was right here, right at the window. I went like this. My elbow went to the side window, so I got a scar on my, on my thing. And then kicked us over the intersection right here. It was right here on Awamansa and, and Market. Went over the, the, the center medium, Knocked over a real sign and went head on with the Chevy Beretta. You don't even see those anymore. And uh, my head went through the windshield. My knees went against the dash. I ended up, uh, I had to rehab to, to walk again. It was like the second time I, re I rehabbed to walk twice in my life. And I remember she was pregnant. They they take, they have to get me out of there. They cut up all my clothes. They, they take us to an ambulance, rush us to community hospital. And, and I was only like 25 years old at the time. And uh, well, 24 years old. Yeah, well, 24 years old at the time. And uh, I've only been saved a couple, I've only been saved a couple years. I remember when, it, when this happened, I remember when this happened, 
the guy next to me whose car it was, he had just got the car. And he goes, oh, man, crash my car. Well, duh, right? <laughs> but I seen his legs are all bat- banged up, and I'm over here in pain. I was in the worst pain of my life. Now, mind you, I've, I've rehabilitated twice to walk in my life. I've been hit by a car twice as a pedestrian in my life. So I've had a lot of issues. That's why I walked the way I walked. So people thought I walked with a limp because they thought I was a gangster. No, I walked with a limp because I've been hit by a car and taking cars. <laughs> I'm going through all this pain, worst pain of my life I've ever felt. And he's over here bleeding and everything. And he's telling me his car's broken up, but I start praying for the guy. I just start praying for the guy. I'm in pain, right? Fast forward, we go to, um, we're at the hospital. And I'm in the emergency room. Martha has no idea what happened. Nobody knows how to get a hold of her or nothing. She's on her way to my job at, after work. She left Ontario, left her job, went to my job to go pick me up after work. And she's just sitting in the van waiting for me, pregnant and everything. <laughs> And then here, come, here comes uh, here comes one of the managers to come tell her, and they were like freaked out because she was pregnant. So she was like, "Oh, okay." She takes off, goes in and sees me, right? She goes to the hospital, right? But the point is, right here it says, "He says, come on, to, come unto me, all you who are tired and heavy laden, I shall give you rest. Take my yoke up." Or let me, hold on, let me. He says, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and burning is light. He says, and he says, he says, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So she walks into the hospital, and I haven't really told this story to many people, but she walks into the hospital in the emergency room, and I mean, I'm just sitting there. I'm cool the whole time. I'm cool. I'm cool. No big deal. No big deal. I'm whatever. But I mean, I'm tell you, I've been hit by cars multiple times, accidents, whatever. The guy's like two beds over, whatever. No big deal. The moment I seen her stinking face, man, huh. I started crying. Aww. I did. I just stinking broke down because I felt comfort. Mm-hmm. It was. It was. It was. It. It blew my mind. It really did. I didn't expect that. I really didn't. I was just like, you know, I just broke down. That's what God says. He says, when you're tired, you're heavy laden. He says, he says, take my yoga upon you. Let, come to me. Let me bring you that rest. Because I was alone. I was in pain. I was hurting. I didn't know what was going on. I just got rushed to the hospital and the ambulance with the sirens going and everything else. And the sign of relief was I was able to see my wife. I was at peace. I was praying for the guy next to me. I was at peace. But my soul still needed. My heart was still hurting. I still needed something. You follow what I'm saying? This is what Jesus Christ says. He says, he says, come to me. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel burdened. Life is going to come at you. Just because you're saved doesn't mean the world stops spinning. Bills still show up on the first. People still have attitudes. Kids still get mad. There's still discord in a marriage. All that still takes place. But he says, don't worry about that. Bring it to me. Let me take care of it for you. The point of the whole thing, the point of the whole thing is simple. Don't give up. Don't give up. When you want to, don't. You're going to want to, but don't. Amen? Anybody have any questions, any input? Go ahead, Carol. What's your question, Carol? Are you done with that? Are you getting it? So don't give up tonight. All right? Keep going forward. Keep going forward. Don't forget. Come on Sunday. We got a lot of things coming up this this the next couple months. We have a lot of events coming up this next few months. Come on Sunday. And then uh Sunday night, remember, if you can't if, if you're working Sunday morning, that's okay. We got you. Sunday night we'll have service at six o'clock. All right? Sunday night, we're going to have a guest preacher. We're going to have a guest preacher Sunday night. I promise you're not going to have to hear my voice. you get to hear his. Amen. It's going to be a different preacher. It'll be a good time. So come Sunday night. Invite someone. Invite someone. Let them know about God. Right? Let them know about God. Amen. So we're going to be dismissed. Amen. I hope this happy tonight. Um, let's bow our hearts. Let's bow our heads as we, uh, as we close in prayer.
And my Father, we thank you, God, this evening, God, for your word, for your message. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you just help us, you guide us, you teach us. God, you keep these words into our hearts, God. I pray, God, you continue to strengthen us, God, that we put our bodies into submission, God, as we seek you, God, as we sow to the spirit and not to the flesh. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.